evening ladies and gents, how are we doing? Uh, well, judging by the stats, it's mainly gents, so how are you doing guys? Um, it's time to do the wee brake pad change uh, on the PCX. Not because they need done, I mean they're it's just about done a thousand miles, so they're, they're barely even running, you know what I mean? Um, just because I think they're shit more than anything else. So the standard Honda ones are going to go. Now this might be my fault, as I said in the previous video. Um, I might have got like ACF 50 on them when I was spraying on the anti-corrosion stuff. Sorry, not ACF 50, the XCP version of it. Um, corrosion block stuff. I might have got a little bit of that on the pads. So it might be my fault for contaminating the pads, I don't know. Or it might just be because they're shite, you know what I mean? Um, so we're going to find out. So this way, what we're going to do... Change the pads over today. Um, we're in the garage, we're chilling out, the diesel heater's got the place nice and warm, uh, it's January, it's not exactly a pleasant time of year, back to work in a couple of days so we need to get the scooter ready to go for commuting. Um, what we're going to need tonight is we're going to need a uh, pick out the tang, I keep forgetting I've got this, um, we're going to need an 8mm and a 12mm and a little extension, just so we don't have the fork leg and we're ratchet, so that's us socket wise all done up ready to go we're going to need a brake pad, so pads of choice that I've used before in loads of bikes EBC Centre Day H um, it kind of makes me giggle that they make race pads for scooters, do you know what I mean, but I um, so it's time to uh, glove up Get a couple of gloves on, Hans are a bit dirty already anyway, but the bike is filthy and I ain't cleaning it because it'll wash all the anti-corrosion stuff off. Um, if we get a nice week, a nice day at the weekend, maybe next week or two, I'll, I'll give it a proper scrub um, and I'll I'll reapply everything, but I ain't cleaning it tonight. The weather's miserable here just now. Um, the cigar and the beer, entirely optional. Tonight, we are smoking Backwoods Honeyberry, a gift from a relative that lives in New York, and um, we're drinking this because it was cheap in Costco. Um, uh, the, totally optional, but highly recommended. Now, let's get to the lift and we'll get going. Now, the lift has been brought into play. I've brought my bench, uh, my lift out, because I am essentially in a lot of pain, um, my knees don't work that well and uh, what have you, the, I've got terrible plantar fasciitis in my foot so standing for any length of time hurts like hell as well. Um, now what we're going to do, it's going to keep smoking my cigar because it's quite tasty, um, we're going to take these two bolts out, these are 212s and then this should just be the slider pin that holds the pads in, I'm going to crack this while they're still actually physically mounted um, for the first time <laughs> it's quite often I forget to do things like that because I'm an idiot um, as I've told you before uh, so I'll crack that off so we can get the pads out easy you could probably get the pads out on a lot of scooters and a lot of bikes without taking the caliper off but on this particular on this particular one we do need to take them off so um, let's get cracking with it so Pun not intended. Right, so this is your 8mm. Now, if any of you are married, I'm not wearing gloves because I don't care about getting my hands dirty or out like that. That's really kind of give a shit. Um, two reasons. I don't want my watch to get wrecked, so I'm going to cover it up with the cuff of the glove. Um, something I've only recently started to kind of care about was watches. Um, and my wife keeps giving me a load of grief because when you go in and wash your hands you don't have to be working the bikes whatever they're manky you um, <laughs> the towels get filthy um, you know so I keep getting, getting in trouble for that and leaving big mucky handprints on the door handles and shit like that when you're, you're kind of going in for working there's that noise we all dread gentlemen um, the watch in case anyone is interested is it's nothing fancy it's a steel dive turtle arrived today got it off some doing a watch trading group on facebook so yeah quick chop for that quite like it so i don't want it to get wet um so i'm going to crack this one off nice and easy 
just slacking it a couple of turns so it's ready to go. Switch over to our 12mm. I'll clean the caliper up when I do this. Um, I'm not going to uh, put a dirty caliper back on, but you can see the dirt and everything on the fork legs, and you can see the rust on the brake disc itself here. You know, because obviously I'm running this bike in all weathers. This is a tool, this isn't a toy. This is to get me to work. Um, so I'm using it all the time. It's not something that I'm mollycoddling. I have taken the um, thermoscrew, the, the apron off, purely for, I want to refit it, because I'm still not convinced it's, it's ever really fitted right. Um, and I've seen another video, sorry mate, I forgot your name, but I had a wee chat with him in comments on his video as well. Uh, and his seems to fit so much better than mine does. So I, I've obviously cocked something up. So I'm going to sort that out. Um, I'm taking off the big sponge pads and I'm going to fit those uh, leg shields and then fit the scooter apron over the top of the leg shields is my thought. Which should make it, you know, kind of nice and protecty still. Um, right, so anyway, enough waddling, right, so we've got those bolts out, so we should be able to just get our caliper off, nice and simple. Um, as you can see, move you around, tons of meat left in the pads, absolutely no issues wear-wise at all. Nothing remotely unexpected wear-wise. <laughs> see the state of that slider? What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that slider up, um, we'll get this in the chuck of the drill and we'll clean it up with a wee bit of very very light sandpaper and then I'll go and put, I'm going to get shouted at about this our folk um, I'm going to put just the, the very tiniest, thinnest possible smear of um, silicon grease on it just to stop it rusting and corroding and the pads will still slide up and doing it fine as you can see there, there's hundreds of meat on them you know there's no issues with them at all as usual one side more, one, more worn than the other um, but there's no obvious contamination that I can see straight away you know it, I mean it could just be in my head that this crap part number if anybody's interested is there on the screen now I'm going to start putting links up to these things that I'm fitting I'm trying to get a hold of somebody at the, the web store at AliExpress where I bought these from uh, bought those leg protectors from, sorry, to see if I can blag a wee discount code for folk if anyone wants them. Um, now, when you're reading through these, you should always check the instructions for the manufacturer, because at the end of the day, they know the product, I don't. Um, do -do 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 -do. This is a break through the cameras. I'm going to point out here, now Matt at the workshop, um, has been championing this for years. And I, I kind of totally get it, but I also get the kind of total fear of not doing it thing. Copper grease. I'm not doing it. It doesn't. EBC don't say to do it, so I'm not doing it. It shouldn't have been needed. If it squeals, I'll take it off. I'll clean it up. I'll fix it. Um, it shouldn't do it. I haven't done it for ages. Used to do it religiously, as, as you do. Um, because you, you don't want to break school. It's that thing you learn, you know, when you're younger and you start doing this crap. Uh, that it's just... When you think about it, it's really stupid. It's probably really stupid putting the silicon grease on this, but hey ho, that's what's happening uh, on that because I don't want this to corrode as bad as this again. What I'll do is in the spring, I'll just order a new one of these. I'm right, so what I'm doing, I'm just gonna put it in the chuck of the drill, hopefully straight. So it spins like that. A little bit of 400 grit sandpaper. And all I've got to do is I'm just going to hold it in here like this. I'm going to actually fold it. I don't want to damage this wee o-ring. So I'm just going to... Just like that. And I'll get rid of the worst of the corrosion on it. So, uh And I want to be clear, the only reason I'm putting that wee bit of silicon grease on this is so it doesn't corrode just the tiniest wee top like that just to get that wee layer right so just like that um, nothing more on my finger than anything else now we can go put this back on 
So I'm quite sure if this is something you're going to be attempting yourself, you're going to be comfortable enough taking a caliper off and that. If you're not, go to your Honda mechanic. If you really want to go to a dealer, do it. There's no shame in that, you know. Not everybody's up to this stuff. Let's take the carrier off. God, you can see the rust. You can see the corrosion starting inside of that already. This is only six months old, this scooter. Less than a thousand miles, jeez oh. Uh, I'm going to leave the spring in that in the now because I'm not really that bothered about it. Um, I'm just going to clean up this wee surface bit here, that's all. All I'm going to do is clean up the worst of this surface crap. Look at this. Best thing for this is a toothbrush. Oh, actually. When they get bad. This isn't too bad. And I don't want to go overboard with what I'm doing because I don't want people to do something and get screwed with it. Nothing we've, all we've done so far is undo three bolts. It's quite easy to fix. Right, so we're relatively clean around there. Let's get that wee bit there. Now, obviously, you kind of get your finger round to the back. I don't want to go showing off tools and stuff. I want this to still be just kind of for anybody to do. Um, you can get, and I've got them, I've got piston pliers that I can turn the piston round. Uh, in fact, I'll just show you them. You know, if you do this kind of thing, if you've got a couple of bikes, if you're going to do this in a couple of machines, stuff like this can be quite handy. That's them there. A bit. 12, 15 quid, something like that. All you do is you put this bit in and then squeeze and it expands to grip it and you can turn the piston round. It means you can clean, like cleaning behind the gum line if you like. So, get in and get the worst of that off. It's still pretty dirty, but it's plenty clean for what I'm, my purpose is today. I don't have any problems with piston performance. Um, I can quite happily show you how to do, I'll put a link in if you want, um, to rebuilding brakes if it's something that you're interested in or something that you need to do, like if your caliper seizes. Quite often with a lot of these scooters, especially when they get older, people just don't look after them, right man, so. Not a bit of brake clean. Um, so it's quite common to get one, especially if you pick up a second hand one can be really in a bad way, you know, the pistons can be really corroded. Just go into Wimoto, or equivalent, or go to like Dave Silver Spares or somewhere, you know, wherever, the, or Robinson's Foundry, wherever you get your stuff, what's the other one? Fowlers, Fowlers is good as well. Um, just buy buy a couple of new pistons. For scooters, they're no dear, you may be talking £10 a piston, and a set of seals, only be a couple of pound. And you can take this whole thing apart, take the holes off, take everything off, strip it right down, pull the pistons out, clean it up, fed it up, brand new pistons and it'll be amazing compared to how it was um, but anyway right so that's enough of that nonsense let's get this put back together so we've got our new pads we look at a galloper i'm going to put the carrier back on so that we can do this properly i'm going to push the pistons back in just to make room because the new pads are obviously thicker than the old ones now if anybody ever says that they've used brake fluid and they need to top it up, you can't use brake fluid. All that happens is it fills up the space in the caliper instead of the reservoir. So I'll push them back in. It shows you how clean they actually are because they've just come back in with a wee bit of force off my finger. Nice and easy. We'll get these ready to go back into the carrier. This is what's on all this stuff, guys. I mean, I've done dozens of these, but... You still cock stuff up, do you know what I mean? You still forget to do things and you get flustered and, you know, you, you make an arse or something and vice versa. Make an arse of things, mastery thing. Oh, there, I've caved all that in. These wee boots, it's important to proper cave it in because it'll impede this for working properly. That should slide nice and freely because that's going to let the caliper move as the pads move. So... There we go, nice and simple. Then we're going to take our pin that we've got there. And we're going to put our pin back in, lining it up through the holes in the pads, as we do. Not that any is there we are. ever have any issues with that. And that's that done, essentially. So what I'm going to do, as they are so fond of saying in the old Haynes manual, refitting is the reversal of removal. So going to put this on, I'm no tightening this up obviously with a caliper off and I'm not putting a great deal of strain on this um, until the caliper's off and everyone's moving freely and I'm happy with how it's all sitting, okay, but I'm going to put the caliper back on just now 
move my pads out, make room for my disc, line it up, and just like that, she'll fit back on eventually. There we go. And I can put, I'm just going to put one of these bolts in just to hold it a wee bit now. So it doesn't fall off again. Now, I'm not going to get into anything technical here. See this blue stuff? It's thread lock. Okay, it's to stop these bolts, like if they rattle, to shoot, stop them shit, it's glue for threads basically. Um, I'm going to clean this off just with a wee wire brush and I've got thread lock, I'm just going to put a wee dab on just because Honda have done it. I've never done it in any bar Harleys to be honest with you, um, purely for vibration reasons, you know, with a Harley. Um, so I wouldn't normally do it on this, but because Honda's done it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and stick with it. Now the thread lock that I've got should be the same. Normally you do it by colour, if you don't know anything about it. And blue is temporary. Red is a bastard. <laughs> it's a nightmare, man. Try and get it off, that's cleaned off. Kind of comes off almost like a plastic when you get in it. I'll really show you how lazy I'm being tonight. I really can't be bothered finding my wire brush. Because this thread lock is... It's like... If you've ever done any plumbing at home, it's like PTFE tape, this stuff's went like. Uh, the Honda stuff, must be good. Um, right, so that's enough, I'm not going to show you cleaning a bolt, but as you can see I've got like the vast majority of it off there. Thread lock will not stick to thread lock, as far as I understand it, you need to put um, fresh thread lock on bare steel, or bare metal. Um, 4MD starts, I ain't doing a damn thing about torque on these. I'll do that myself later, you check it yourself. You know how to do it, then do it. Don't listen to me. Um, I don't know what the top values are for these, and I'm not going to tell you. Because no mallet will be bloody wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to just put a wee dab of this on. Come on. So this is the stuff that I'm, I've got now, because my last bottle dried out, so I forgot to close it. We've got far too much on that. I'm just going to clean a lot of that off in my glove and again another reason why I'm wearing a glove I don't really want thread glue on my fingers I don't know if it's bad for your, your skin or whatever or not, it probably is ever intends to be done it so let's get this other bolt out and give it a clean I'm not, like I say, torque values etc I will talk these up later on, honest I'm not just going to do it FT if you don't know what FT is you'll need to google that one um, because YouTube will put me in YouTube jail for that word, I think. Um, you could go and see the guys at Bad Obsession Motorsport or something like that. They do things a lot to FT, along with the comedy. Click, noise. Uh, I'm not even going to kid on that I'm doing it. You should. Um, right, so, all you're doing with thread lock is that's probably more than enough. More than enough. And obviously I dropped the lid. Right, and then smear it round so that that and the excess just wipe off. So I'm not putting a lot on it. Or I don't think that's a lot. Maybe somebody will take the piss and tell me it is, man. I, I don't know. I've had emails, I've had messages for people, I've um, had phone calls for people as well, asking for, you know, what my thoughts are and stuff. Guys, I appreciate the, the commentary. It's nice to meet people. It's nice to talk to people that are into this sort of stuff. But um, like I have said as well several times, please remember, I'm an idiot. Um, there are other people out there who actually do this sort of stuff for a living, who um, know a lot better than I about a lot of things. Just tight oh, that on the camera. Just tightening up this wee pin. The wee pin, there'll be a top value for it somewhere in the manual. I've tried to get a manual for this, I can't find one. Um, Haynes don't have one for this year, they've only got one for the previous model. They maybe not made it yet, maybe they will, maybe they won't, who knows. Um, and I haven't been able to find a dodgy Honda one on the internet either. So... Right. That's what it is. 
nice having a decent ratchet, so it is. Good six sided sockets, give it. Click. Click. There we go. So that should be that all done. I just got to double check. This wee slide up pin's nice and tight. Yep, she's good to go. And that's pretty much that, guys. Nice and simple. Brake pads changed. Now, when you do this, see, I told you it was filthy. Look at the state of it. Um, make sure that you don't do what some people do and I have done in the past pump your brake pedal a couple of times to push your pistons back out and get your disc back in contact okay and that's us EBC pads fitted uh, and we'll see how that goes report back in when we're reviewing them okay see you later guys bye